Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? Doing well. Yes. I think there's good news today. Finally, good news. finally the good news. The Mueller investigation is over, and we're ready to start a new one. When's the next one going to start? <laughs> wonder who, who they will be investigating next. Well, it'll probably be Hillary. Everybody wants to know what Hillary is doing, so maybe, maybe they'll investigate her one of these days, too. But no, I think... Um, <laughs> You know, the, the, the left-wing media is going to be awfully bored. I mean, it's been incessant. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't sit and watch television, but I sit sometimes and I flip channels. And I get most fascinated when, say, Fox runs all the statements by the six other channels. And yeah. it's all canned. They all say the same thing. Literally. And, yeah. uh, of course, they put their foot in their mouth, too. But I'll tell you what, I think... Um, I think this was a, a good report in that uh, people have become more skeptical <laughs> of government, yeah. that uh, the left have to admit, well, maybe we went too far and the FBI needs to have get rehabilitated and Justice Department, we'll clean it up. We're already, you know, rebuilding confidence in government. <laughs> but I think the loss of confidence is what uh, what was necessary, and, and that's very good. Um, and, and, of course, um, you know, the conclusion course was a, a lot different than a lot of people anticipated the Democrats especially you know but when you look back now um, we so often look at most uh, establishment po politicians are not being too smart yeah you know they <laughs> that they live in their own world and are self-serving and they make stupid mistakes well I would think that uh, if you comparing mistakes now between the two political parties this has to be one of the biggest you know uh, for, by the Democrats on, on pursuing this and uh, yet they did it and uh, now it's in and now they're going to have to live with it and they're going to uh, get the house to investigate it and find out what's really in that report and my idea and others have shared this is that uh, that may be really another good step because it might just be mean that maybe what uh, they did in this Mueller report was protect Hillary because they could have gone in that direction uh, her, or, her organization was dealing with Russia Gate. Yeah, you know they could have they could have said, "Hey, this this looks like the real problem is over here," and they ignored it. So somebody's going to when they get that full report, they might look at that. It the whole thing might backfire on them, and uh, that that won't uh, be disappointing to too many people other than other than, than the Democrats. But it's. Uh, it, it's something that, um, you know, it, it's at an end stage, it's restarting, everybody's lining up their ducks and they're, they're getting ready to fight the next battle. Uh, but I would say Trump came out pretty darn well on this. And uh, the one statement I thought he made was pretty good because I don't find too, too, too much stuff that he says fascinating. <laughs> but he said, you know, somebody with a little weaker skin or something like that, he says they couldn't have stood up to all this. <laughs> and, and I think there's some truth to that. There's not many who could have put up with that, but there's not many others that could have made himself so vulnerable. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you talk about unintended consequences because here are is the vast majority of the Democratic Party, the almost entirety of the mainstream media, politicians desperate to get rid of Trump, desperate to undermine him. They've done the one thing by pushing this hoax for two years, and now the rest of the world knows what many of us felt in the beginning that it's a hoax pushing this for two years it's shown to be a hoax and what happens Trump comes out of this looking better than ever stronger than ever and they've just given him his 20 2020 campaign complete slogan complete everything anytime something comes up he's gonna roll this out yeah no, I I think that's right and I think uh, he's probably feeling pretty good pretty good today but uh, the um, the, the whole thing is, is that it was so overblown in the way you mentioned, why did they spend these two years? But it was pure politics and it was corruption in our government. I thought the, the thing that annoyed me the most was the corruption in the Justice Department and the FBI. Yeah. Not that they've been our favorite anyway, but uh, it, it is so corrupt in how they use it. it uh, it's really good news that this information got out. And I kept thinking, you know, someday, just as they've written some good books about uh, the lies told about getting into war in Iraq and Afghanistan, and the truth is coming out, and history, history wins out in the end. The, the, the 
the truth will be found out. In this case, uh, there will be books written about this. Yes. But right now, the the material is becoming more available, and and I think we're closer to the truth about what government is really like now than we were before. So in that sense, it's uh, it's good that uh, that that uh, Mueller came out with this you know this uh, answer and, and his and his program there. I think uh, was much to the benefit of the country. You want to talk about corruption? Look at the U.S. intelligence community. Look at Brennan, and look at Clapper. For these last two years, they would go on mainstream media regularly and say, well, you don't know what we know because we are in the intelligence business and we have all the secret stuff. And let me tell you, there is so much evidence that Trump is uh, Putin's puppet and this and that. For two years, they've peddled this, masquerading as if, you know, they're still in the intelligence committee. If, any, if anything should destroy people's confidence in the character of people going into government, this should, I hope. You know, I've made the statement many times about when they have investigations and commissions set up, like the Kennedy Commission or the 9/11 Commission, yeah. that you never you never get to the truth of it, and uh, so often it's for cover up. So I would say in this case there was an investigation. And I think we're better off now than when we were two years ago. If there had not been the investigation, uh, then the lies would continue. But the lies continue anyway. This is this is so so amazing. They never quit. They just they just go over to something else and say, oh yeah, but he didn't do in, didn't do this. And uh, and you know, on this collusion thing, they said, well, there's no no collusion, uh, but there was uh, uh, obviously there, there could be some cover up. Uh, and, and the statement, even with what the bar put out, he says, yes, but they didn't prove that uh, there was no cover up. <laughs> so, but how do you, how do you prove something that didn't happen? Yeah. I, they said like it's proving a negative. It, it, there was no evidence and they had no information and no reason to pursue it. But remember, they, we do not have proof that he did not collude yeah. with them. So the Democrats, of course, will grab hold of that. But I think that's a, a stupid way to uh, present it, that uh, there's a lot of things they didn't prove. <laughs> you know, that, uh, that when you say you can't prove a negative. A anyway, I, I still think it uh, was a, a good day for uh, uh, revealing some truth. But believe me, uh, I don't think our work is done. <laughs> I think it's going to continue because we'll probably be busy talking about foreign policy as well to make sure people know the truth about that. And hopefully people will take on board. This is massive malpractice, journalistic malpractice. Max Boot, David Korn, MSNBC, CNN, Rachel Maddow, all of these people, massive malpractice over two years. Uh, there was, a, I don't usually retweet Donald Trump, <laughs> but he had a very good tweet that he put out just before the show started. It was a little segment on Fox News where they had an expert on uh, terrorism or something. And anyway, he, he made the point that uh, Adam Schiff, Swilwell, these other guys have been pushing this hoax for years. They should resign from Congress in disgrace, never show their faces again, because they pushed this lie and they knew it was a lie all along. And, you know, this is a good thing. This is house cleaning. Hopefully people will wake up and stop believing all of the other government lies. Venezuela, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and the word collusion is a pretty good one to describe the, the people who have really caused so much harm. And that is there was a grand collusion and they felt like they were above the law, that they would never be caught. I'm Hillary Clinton. They can't touch me. And they've made agreements. They're not going to prosecute me. Went on and on. But there was some deep collusion going on to plan this. You know, they picked up on that dossier yeah. and then they get they were able to collude with the FBI and the Justice Department and then pump it into the media and uh, they were able they were able to do this so there was a tremendous collusion so that's the collusion that needs to be revealed you know if they were going to if the Democrats are going to demand you know that this be reopened and start from scratch again and I just suspect that they may open up another can of worms for themselves because there'll be something in that report to show that they didn't follow Follow the trail, and the trail had nothing to do with Trump. The trail was all over the Hillary's and Hillary and the Democrat. So uh, I, I think I think they're going to get stung with this as well. Talk about projection. You know, the claim was, oh, the Russians are doing this to undermine confidence in our system. Actually, what happened is the Hillary campaign deeply undermined the confidence in our system and our system itself. They used a fake dossier that they knew was fake 
to get a FISA warrant to tap the Trump campaign, to tap Page, in which that means that they take two steps out, they can tap basically everyone in Trump's campaign. The, our intelligence agencies were spying on a presidential campaign. If that doesn't undermine the democratic system of our governance, I don't know what does. And those several in individuals who probably had some infractions with the law, but it is said that everybody in this country probably breaks a, a, a law uh, every single day or yeah. a couple laws yeah. every day. But there was there some have been indicted and some uh, will be sentenced and some will go to jail and some don't deserve it. But I would think this is going to give Trump license to pardon a oh, yeah. bunch. I mean, anybody that's going to be questioned and say, this was all fake. This was all fake. And uh, though he, he, my guess is, is that when the time is right, he's, he will be generous with the pardon. He should. <laughs> Monifert, uh, Roger Stone, all of these people should be, should be pardoned. But you know, the Russians are also guilty. We've been piling on the Demo I mean, the Republicans are also the Russians. They're guilty <laughs> of other things. But the Republicans are also guilty. We've been piling on the Democrats. But how many people in the Republican Party didn't have the courage to defend against what they knew was false because they also kind of wanted it to be true. They wanted to have the Reds under the beds because Washington needs to have an enemy, a strong enemy, because Washington survives. The lifeblood of Washington is war and enemies. So yeah. they didn't, you know, they're just as guilty, many of them. Yeah, it, it wasn't a Republican and Democratic battle. I remember at the beginning, the, the moderate Republicans, anybody but Trump, they were with the Democrats yeah. on all this, and they were pushing it and cooperating with it. So it was a three, uh, three ways deal here. Uh, but uh, right now, I, I think it's uh, narrowing down a, a, a little bit. But, you know, um, Russia's still in the news in the foreign policy because over this weekend, the last couple of days, uh, they've gotten more active in Venezuela. And maybe uh, they thought everybody would be reading about Russiagate, uh, <laughs> but they have not uh, forgotten about Venezuela. They consider Venezuela an ally of theirs, and uh, they're going a long distance, but they've decided, well, we have an interest there, and we're uh, sending them some food, uh, and that... Uh, they say, well, you you know, it was Maduro. He'll he'll probably he'll probably uh, you, you know not accept the food and, <laughs> and burn the food up like they accuse them of going. But anyway, they're sending food, but they're sending weapons, and then they're sending military people. And the message is uh, not uh, it's not going to go unnoticed by our government because that means that means uh, that there's just a greatly reduced chance now that we're going to be landing troops here, which I never believed we would. But we definitely aren't going to do that. But it might be another uh, setback for the aggressiveness of our, of our foreign policy. And this is really kind of a serious scenario playing out. Venezuela is an ally with Russia. And they've been pushed into Russia's arms because of our stupid foreign policy since 98 with Chavez of sanctions and blockades. So they've made relations with Russia. They've invited Russia in. Hey, we need some help. The Americans, the or uh, the, the North Americans are trying to overthrow our government. So there was a high-level meeting last week. You know, I think it was coming to a head where the U.S. was really thinking about using force. There was a high-level meeting last week between the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Rybakov and our regime change czar for Venezuela, Elliot Abrams. And basically they sat down and the Russians said, this is our red line. We will not accept. We have interests. We do business with Venezuela. We will not accept a U.S. military intervention in Venezuela. And what's interesting about this meeting, it was pretty clear, but Abrams only had one statement. And he didn't bluster. He didn't say, oh, they're full of beans. He said something interesting. He was chastened. He said, no, we didn't come to a meeting of the minds, but I think the talks were positive in the sense that both sides emerge with a better understanding of the other's views. Very interesting. You know, if this gets uh, to be a much hotter situation and they have to actually talk about how are we going to defuse this, um, I have a suggestion for them, although it's tongue in cheek, and, <laughs> and that is that there, we had a hot situation uh, in the year I was drafted in the military in 1962 with, with missiles in Cuba. Yep. And uh, that was a big concern then. And so. We talked to we talked to Khrushchev and, and uh, we uh, took some 
took some missiles out of Turkey and, uh, and the Russians came and took their missiles out of Cuba. So maybe if we could work a deal with them if this is getting hot and we want to defuse it, we'll say to the Russians, all right, uh, if you take your, take your missiles out of Venezuela and just uh, get out of town, yeah, we'll, we'll leave Eastern Europe. <laughs> We're going to remove our missiles that we have all lined up not too far from your borders. And uh, that would probably be a fair trade-off uh, for peace, but uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> and it's funny that you say that, though, because, you know, uh, uh, Bolton is constantly talking about Monroe Doctrine, Monroe Doctrine. That actually is the Monroe Doctrine, which is that we won't tolerate other people interfering in the Western Hemisphere, and in exchange, this is the part they don't report, in exchange, we're not <laughs> going to put right. our troops over there. <laughs> so they only take the, the part of it uh, that they like. But, you know, what's interesting is after this meeting last week, over the weekend, and we noticed there's been a couple of good uh, pieces on Zero Hedge, but there was a big Russian transport plane that flew in. Tons of aid, like, as you said. Also, 99 Russian troops landed there. And not only that, uh, General Vasily Tonkoshkorov, the chief of main staff of Russian ground forces, a big shot, big general, he landed there for talks. And they also set up the S-300s, the anti-missile defense uh, in, in at least one Venezuelan base. And I would say that the S-300s are responsible for ending all U.S. Uh, fantasies, uh, U.S., uh, Israeli, and Saudi fantasies of regime change in Syria. I think that ended that there, that there and then. I wonder if it'll have the same effect in Venezuela. Well, I just wish they, I mean, this is a problem. It's a military problem and, and a geopolitical problem. But I just wish that the people in Venezuela and the rest of the world would realize that uh, they need to change basic policy if they want to defuse this thing. And that is not depend on socialism. Yeah, so, yeah. so what are we doing? We're talking about what we need is more socialism in our country. But, uh, but I think all the arguments that you make are, are certainly right. But the solution isn't going to be found by the Russians being there and us backing off and that sort of thing. What they need to do, I mean, it, it's not like Venezuela was, is, uh, has never experienced half-decent economies. You know, there was a time when they were very, very wealthy until they came in with, with socialism, you know, and, and that's uh, a message that uh, is not going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, accepted here in the next couple of weeks because there, you're going to see more confrontation but I think I think we are going to back down. I bet I bet you, uh, uh, you know, the United States people uh, Bolton. I bet he he doesn't know what to do about this. Except he will not uh, he will not be, speak mildly. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, we know socialism doesn't work as a, as an economic organizing principle. But I would argue that we've got much more socialism than Venezuela does. <laughs> Look at our trillion dollar military industrial complex. That's socialism for the rich, though. So that doesn't count. But, um, you know, if we were so confident in our economic system, which we should be, the free market is the best way of doing things, we shouldn't have been imposing sanctions on them for 10 years. Flood them with business, flood them with, here's the best, better way of organizing things, and they would have learned by example, like you always say, rather than by, you know, John Bolton shaking them by the neck. But um, I guess we're probably ready to conclude, so I was, I was going to have a final thought, and yeah, t Donald Trump is vindicated. Uh, and his administration, his campaign is vindicated. But I think a lot of the rest of us are vindicated too because when this artificial shadow, uh, was, this cloud was put over the Trump campaign uh, for Russiagate, for interfering with Russia and this sort of thing, it spread to a lot of us. If you remember in November of 2016, very early on, Washington Post ran a front page article, all of these alternative uh, independent news sites are actually just fronts for Russia. Well, we were named, antiwar.com was named, Zero Hedge, the Drudge Report was named, and it put a shadow over all of us. The effect it had was it caused us to do self-censorship without even realizing it. The idea that if you oppose the neocon interventionist foreign policy, you're an agent of Russia. Well, no one wants to be viewed as an agent of a foreign country. So you do bite your tongue. You do think twice about, should I go on RT? Maybe I shouldn't. I'm saying the same things I say anywhere else. Uh, and they give me an outlet, but, you know, maybe it's going to hurt the reputation. What about the fundraising for the Ron Paul Institute? Maybe it discouraged some people. Hey, I like what they're doing, but I'm worried. I don't want people to think that I'm supporting a Russian front. All of this, this is one of the, this is a crime of the century, I think, in many ways. And it extended through the entire society. So I've spent the weekend 
feeling vindicated and feeling angry at what they've done to us and what they've done to Dr. Paul and the efforts that we've done over the two years. So let's hope that with reckoning there also will come some healing, but also some people should be made to pay for what they've done to others. Yes, Daniel, and I want to follow up on a point you made that, uh, yes, uh, they have bad policies, they've had bad policies, they've moved in the direction of socialism, but we have not helped them. Uh, we have exported our sanctions, uh, we've exported controls and our militarisms and, and uh, tariffs and, and trade wars that go on, and that has not been helpful to us or to them. So our exports uh, aren't uh, exporting the ideas of liberty, and that, that is a problem. And uh, right now, now, I think that is what is the world needs most right now is an understanding about how free people operate and why you depend on government just to say, well, we're going to provide the goods and services. It's very enticing. People think they can get it for free. And that's been around for a long, long time. But inevitably, no matter what the motivations or the pretense is about why we're giving things out, always to help the poor people. We want to have and express compassion for the people. And what we have to do is make sure that we have humanitarian concerns for the people of the world. At the same time, it's all a scheme for control and power. And uh, we, we need more people to understand that the answers are not found in more government. The answers are found with less government, which means that getting along with people and advocating trade and travel and getting along with people, I think it could have been a lot different. So yes, there were some bad ideas, and there's still some bad ideas in Venezuela and other countries, but there are some bad <laughs> ideas here, and uh, unfortunately we've been exporting those, and, one, and our worst export is the exportation of our militarism, and that of course represents the fact fascism that we have in this country because it is the big corporations that uh, promote this type of foreign policy because there's a lot of money to be made. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.